What's up you guys? Today we're gonna go over a problem asked at Facebook, Uber, and Google. It's called find first and last position of element in sorted array. And so the description says, given an array of integers nums sorted in ascending order, find the starting and ending position of a given target value. Your algorithm's runtime complexity must be in the order of big O of log of n. If the target is not found in the array, return negative one, negative one. So anytime you see a constraint that the algorithm's runtime must be in big O of log of n and the input is sorted, you should immediately think to use binary search. So in the first example, we have uh, the numbers 5, 7, 7, 8, 8, 10, and we have a target value of 8. And so we need to find the very first occurrence of 8 and the very last occurrence of 8. So in this example, uh, the only two 8s in this array are these two, and they are at positions 3 and 4 respectively. And so if we only had a single number in the array with the target, then we would just return the same index just twice in that output array. And then in the second example, we have a target of 6, but 6 is not in our input array. So we return negative 1, negative 1 to show that that target is not there. So I'll jump over to the whiteboard and I'll show you guys how we're going to solve this using binary search. The way this problem differs from normal binary search problems is that we need to find the very first and last occurrence of our target value, not just the target value itself. So what we're going to do to solve this problem is we're actually going to do two different binary searches. The first binary search will find the first occurrence of our target and the second binary search will find the last occurrence of our target. So let's say in this example our target was 8. We would do one binary search to find this number 8, which is at index 2. And then we do a second binary search, and we'd end up finding this number 8, because it's the, it's the furthest right, and that would be at index 6. So we would return 2, 6 from this given input. So two different binary searches. Um, it's still very similar to a normal binary search that we're going to do. Uh, we just have to make sure that we keep track of an index, specifically an index that will be either the furthest left or furthest right. So we're gonna perform the first binary search to find the very first occurrence of our target number eight, which would be at index two in this case. So in a normal binary search, we have a left and right pointer, so L, pointer will start at index 0, and then our R pointer will start at the very last index, which is 7, and then we have to calculate our midpoint, right? So it would just be 0 plus 7 divided by 2, and so that would be 3. And then the last variable we're going to need is a variable to keep track of the index that we have seen where our midpoint was equal to our target. So we can just call this f, which is short for first, first index. And this can be initialized to negative 1. We initialize this to negative 1 to start with because we haven't found a number yet that is equal to our target, right? Because f just represents the index. So right now we're looking at index 3. And we can see that mid is currently equal to our target. So that means we need to update our f. And we're looking at index 3, so this changes to a 3. And remember, we're trying to find the very first occurrence. So since our target was 8, we just want to move left now because we're, we're still trying to find the very furthest left element that is equal to our target. So all we have to do is set our right pointer to be equal to mid minus 1. So our right pointer mid minus one, that would be two. And then we just do the same calculation. So we're gonna do zero plus two divided by two, which would be one. And right now we're currently looking at index one. And since seven is less than our target, what that tells us is we need to move right because we're trying to get closer to our target, eight. So we're going to move our left pointer now to be whatever mid is plus 1. So we're going to move our left pointer to be 2. 
and then we're going to recalculate our midpoint. And so if we did 2 plus 2 divided by 2, that would be 2 as well. And so now we're looking here, and we can see that we found another midpoint that is equal to our target. So what that tells us is we need to update f. So instead of 3, f will now be 2. And since our left and right pointer are now equal to each other, we don't have any further iteration to do. So the very first index of our target would be 2. So for the second part, we need to do another binary search, but we're trying to find the rightmost element that's equal to our target. So in that case, this would be this number 8 at index 6. So we can introduce another variable, and we can just call it L, which is short for last. But instead of initializing L at negative 1, like how we did for first, we can just initialize our last to be whatever f is currently, which is 2. Because under the scenario where we only had one element that was equal to our target, then our last element would also be the first, right? Because there's only one occurrence of it. So this can just be initialized to 2. And then our left pointer can be initialized to 2 as well, whatever our first uh, was set to. The reason why is because we don't need to look at these elements any longer. We only need to look from this point onwards, right? Because we're trying to find the rightmost element equal to our target. And then our right pointer is going to be initialized to our end, just like how we did in the first binary search. So that would be at index 7. And then we're going to calculate our midpoint. So we're doing 2 plus 7, which is 9. 9 divided by 2, 4. And so we're looking at index 4. We see that the, the midpoint is equal to our target. So we need to update our last uh, pointer. So our L will update to index 4. And since we are trying to find the rightmost element, we need to move right. So our left pointer will move to be whatever mid is plus 1. So L mid plus 1 would be 5. And then we need to recalculate our mid. So we're going to do 5 plus 7, which is 12 divided by 2. We have 6. So now we're looking at this number 8. Since we are on number 8, we need to update L. So 4 to 6. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to move to the right because we don't know necessarily that this is the last number 8. So L is going to move to mid plus 1, which would be 7. And then we recalculate our mid, which 7 plus 7 divided by 2 would be 7. And now we're looking at 10. This is not equal. And then since our left and right pointer are equal to each other, that means we're finished iterating. So our final answer is F and L. So in that case, it would be 2, 6. So that is a full walkthrough of the algorithm that we're going to write. So let's jump over to the code, and I'll show you guys how to implement it. So we're given an integer array and a target value, and we need to return an integer array. But this is just a pairing. We're just returning the first and last index. And so we need to initialize two functions. The first function is we need to find the first index, and the second function we're going to find the, uh, the very last index. right? So we can say private int, we're going to return an index, find first, and we're going to pass in our nums array and our target. right? And then we're going to have another function, find last. We're going to pass in our nums, our target. But then we're going to pass in one additional parameter for our find last, and that is whatever the result of find first was. Because remember, we don't have to look through all of the array when we're finding the last element. We can just build off what we already calculated here. So we can say first. 
that'll that'll also be passed in. So up here, let's initialize a result. And this will just be of size two. And so we can say, give me the first. We're going to find the first. We're going to pass in nums and pass in our target. And then we're going to get the last. And we'll say find last nums target. And then we're going to pass in first. And actually, we don't even need we don't even need this. We can just return a new int with first last. That makes it a little bit easier. So now let's just implement these functions. So in here, we can say int left is equal to zero, and then we're gonna have a right equal to nums dot length minus one. And then we're also going to need to keep track of our index like we talked about. So we can say int, we can call this first, first index. And this will be initialized to negative one because we have not found a number yet that's equal to our target. So negative one is what we put here. Um, oh, and something I just realized I forgot. If our first index is a negative one, then we need to actually do a check up here. So we can say if first is negative one, then we we did not find that element. We did not find our target. So we can just return an integer array of negative one, negative one. And this is just so that we don't have to run through the separate the second function that we write. So now we can say while left is less than or equal to right. We need to calculate our mid. So int mid is left plus right minus left divided by two. The reason why we do it this way is so we can handle for overflow. If we did right plus left divided by two, if those numbers were very large, then we could potentially overflow to whatever integer dot max value is. So that's why we write it this way. And we're gonna say if nums of mid is greater than or equal to our target. The reason why it's greater than or equal to is because since we're trying to find the very first occurrence of our target, we want to move left. If nums mid is greater than our target, then we are, we're already going to be moving left. And if it's equal to our target, then we also need to move left because we're trying to greedily find that leftmost occurrence. And so we need to do another check in here, specifically a check to determine if we need to update our first index or not. So we can say if nums of mid, if it's equal to our target, then we need to update our index. So our first index will be equal to mid, whatever mid is. And then all we have to do is move to the uh, left. So we need to update our right pointer, which will be right equals mid minus one. If this is not true, if nums of mid was actually less than our target, what that means is we need to move to the right. We're going to update our left pointer so we get closer to our target value. So we're going to say left is equal to mid plus one. And then we're going to come down here and just return first index. And so now all I need to do is implement the find last function. So it's going to be very similar to what we wrote here. So let's actually just copy all of this and just update it as we go. So we can just update this to be last index. And so like I talked about before, we don't need to scan through all of the array this time, since we know if we get to this function, there is for sure a target in our array. So our left can be equal to whatever our first was. And then same thing with our last index. That can just be set to first. And so really the only difference here is going to be this part. So if nums of mid is less than or equal to our target. If it's less than or equal to our target, that means we're going to move our left pointer. 
So our left pointer will now move, and then our right pointer will be the else case. So you can think about it, if we have a, a number mid that is less than or equal to our target, we're trying to greedily find the rightmost position. This check will handle the case, both cases, if our mid is equal to target or it's less than our target. We still want to perform the same logic. We want to move our left pointer. We want to move to the right so we can, we can either get closer to our target or get closer to the rightmost element that would be our target. And then we also need to update just these references. Uh, instead of first index, it'll be last index. And that should be it. So let's just make sure that this code works. And there we go. So as you know, the time complexity is going to be log of n. We had a restriction in the description saying that we needed to have a log of n time complexity. And so that's where the binary search comes in. Although we are doing two binary searches, it's just log of n plus log of n, which is just log of n. And then our space complexity is constant. We don't initialize any extra memory. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.